there's really only three aspects to doing well on these exams. is understanding the basics, doing practice questions, and doing practice questions under timed conditions. So every time you do a test, I really want you to think, okay, well, how could I improve upon this, right? You want to do the test. You then, when you get to the answers, you want to actually complete them. So if you look at an answer on a question and you're like, I know how to do that now, you probably don't. You need to do it. So there's always that point of you skip something as soon as you understand it. You cycle through the exam several times, right? Like the last question, there'll be a couple of things where it literally is too hard and it's like, well, you don't, you don't want to spend all your time trying to understand a really difficult question with two marks. You might think, I can't skip it because it's consequential. That might not necessarily be true. Make sure during reading time you ascertain that. The entire question looks like it's based on one singular thing, but it's not. So that's what they tend to do with a lot of probability questions is they'll have like a continuous at the start, then they'll have a discrete, then they'll have like a normal. The problem with these exams is they're separating the geniuses from the rest of us, right? That's why the average mark, that test that I gave you is 30%, right? If you got anywhere near that, like, like most people actually got zero on that last part of that question, right? So you should feel good about what you got. Do you guys remember my little formula for application questions? The first step is to read it. You wouldn't have thought I'd have to say that, but you kind of, there's, there's glancing over it and then actually studying it to get the data from it. The next thing is finding the topic that it's on. So you've got to kind of, okay, if it's gradient, okay, that's going to be calculus, okay? If it's chance, it's going to be figuring it out. And also if it's a probability question, whether it's binomial or continuous and this sort of stuff. Then you want to get out all the numbers and even they'll have like a whole pile of information and you've got to dissect which is applying to which thing. And maybe even before that, you want to look at what formulas apply to that topic. And once you've got all that data with you, you can then just start doing stuff. Look at it and be like, <laughs> I don't know how this is going to go. Let's get going. All right, what do we have? Uh, that doesn't work. And then eventually it kind of turns out. Cool. Everyone happy to start doing another test? All right, let's start. <laughs> 